Hello everyone, it is your boy back at it again with another video and this time we're do, we are going to be doing a tutorial on tech level 1 how, what to do, different strategies, different builds, how to place your buildings and all that stuff so let's jump right into the video so the first thing you want to do is pick a faction I'm picking the Republic because the Republic is my favorite faction but each, each faction has their own tech tree with their own strengths and weaknesses so I suggest reading up on each faction and seeing which one is your play style, which one do you like and just give it a try you, you can also go into the data bank and read up on your faction uh, maybe some lore and all that stuff if you so choose so if you want to do that you can go right ahead so the first thing i want to teach you is building placement uh placement of ores and resources and a nerf build so in this particular video i got a bunch of nerfs and all this stuff but the first thing i want to talk about is what i see right now Right now I see two trees close to my command center. The command center is the big building that you start off with. And then I see a bunch of berries off to the off to the like corner. So as you can see here, I discovered a bunch of nerfs. Nerfs are considered capturable animals that you can use to generate a passive income. But you need an animal nursery to do so. How the animal nursery works is by capturing animals like these nerfs and putting them inside the animal nursery. Each animal nursery costs 100 carbon and can fit 10 animals. The more animals that you have inside the animal nursery, the more food you can generate. If you have 10 out of 10 nerfs, you can generate 77 food per minute. But this can be upgraded by each tech level, but we're just focusing on tech level 1 right now. So like I said before, the animal the nerfs are capturable animals, so that means they can be captured by your opponent. So don't let him do that, like as you can see here, the opponent tried to capture my nurse, but I didn't let him. Also you can see here that I'm hunting an animal and luring him closer to my food processor, the building next to the berries. It's important to do this so your workers don't have to travel so far to bring the food. You can do this by shooting the animal twice. If you do it once, he might not follow you, so do it twice, and he follows you all the way to the to the food processor and where your workers can gang up on him and kill him for more food. So as you can see here the opponent tried to sneak a bunch of nerfs past me. It didn't really work out because I captured them. A good trick is to allow your scout to follow the nurse back home especially if they're going long distances. As you can see here I found a bunch of nerfs far far away. I press the follow button and click on the nerf. The scout will follow that nerf all the way back home until you tell it to stop. This is very good if you had to travel for long distances and all that stuff. So, as you can see here, I'm getting attacked by three troopers. And they're hitting my animal nursery, which is really bad because it has a lot of nerfs in it. This is partially my fault and to educate you guys on how build and placement works. Those animal nurseries are in front of where my opponent is. So it can be easily accessible and attacked by my opponent. And this is my fault, but for educational purposes only, this is why it is important to place your buildings. Do you see where that carbon collector is? That's where my animal nursery should be. But because I'm educating you and because I'm silly the animal nurseries are in front of my command center center where they're not supposed to be and you can see here they're being attacked so the command center has an emergency button that allows your workers to run to the command center and get inside and start shooting at the enemies i press this button but you notice how the workers are going around the building this is because i never gave them the uh, direct path to the to the command center because of bad building placement. So not only did I put my animal nursery in front of the map and my de defense, my, my workers had to go around certain buildings to get to the command center, center for emergencies. This is really bad. And I did it on purpose to show you why it's important to place your buildings in a certain way that it emphasizes defense, but offense as well. So. I usually place my buildings three block, like three pixels away from my command center. 
farms are three pixels long and three pixels wide. If you do this, you have enough room for farms and enough defense that your command center can shoot at the buildings, uh, shoot at the enemies shooting at your buildings. So this is really good. A, a good rule of thumb is to always put your buildings behind your command center, not in front, unless you want them to shoot something. Your power core, your animal nurseries, and hopefully most of your food processing buildings should be behind your command center. So your command center can act as a defense while you're being attacked. So moving on to the next game, it's pretty much the same thing. Scout your area, look for trees, look for berries, and decide what you're going to do. If you have a lot of nurse near your building, near your command center, center, build an animal nursery. But if you have a lot of berries, like I did, build a food processor. So as you can see here, I have a lot of berries, but I'm also going to lure this animal close to my food processor. This is very important, like I said before, because you don't want the long walking distance between your food processor and the animal. So take two shots, lure them over, and use the rest of your workers to kill them, like I did here. So a neat trick that you can do is select your workers and press the food processor. This will allow your workers to deposit their food quickly. Uh, usually it takes a long time for your workers to gather enough food to deliver it to the food processor. If you do it this way, it gives you that few extra seconds to get that worker out faster. You can also press the emergency button if you have a lot of workers close to your command center. Every time you press the emergency button, they deposit the food into the command center. So it makes it that much faster. Loading up a new game. As you can see, I'm building a shipyard. This is a bit of a different build that boosts your economy and allows you to get more food. So during this particular match, I was getting rushed and I died, but I just wanted, I knew that I knew that, but I wanted to show you the shipyard build where you build a shipyard and a power core that boosts your economy. Now, if you're getting rushed, don't do this because you die like me, but I didn't have a lot of food and I didn't have a lot of animals near me. So I kind of was forced into a corner to build a shipyard and start getting food and all this stuff. So if you're close to the water and you have a lot of carbon, you can just build a shipyard and a power core that boosts your shipyard and makes the building process faster. Without a power core, it's, it's very, very slow. So I say get the power core and get the shipyard and start building these ships to boost your food production. So loading up another game. As you can see, I didn't have a lot of food around me because uh, this was a snow planet and I didn't have a lot of nurse and only had like one animal. So I was forced to build farms. Now going farms is a little difficult and a lot slower than most builds. You need a lot of carbon and you need a lot of workers. So as you can see, my food processor is three tiles or three pixels away from my command center. This makes room for a farm. So when you build a farm, and a food processor, make sure it's three away. Now, I'd put it in front, because I suck. <laughs> and I should have put it behind my command center. When I mean to put it behind your command center, I mean away from your enemy. So usually the opposite of where you are, the closest to the edge of the map. So if your opponent's on one side of the map, place your buildings on the opposite side where your, where your opponent is. It takes 500 food to get to tag level two. So the whole point of tech level one is build up enough workers to get to tech level two, which is 500 food. So every time you build something, which is usually hunting, nerfs, farms, or ships, you're trying to get to tech level two as fast as you can. But you got to make sure you have enough workers to, pro to, to sustain tech level two to get the upgrades that you need. So usually... At tech level 2 you get turns and all that stuff, but that's for a different video. As of right now, we're focusing on tech level 1, which is worker which is worker production and hunting and all this stuff. It's all about boosting your food and maintaining carbon. The rest of the uh, ores don't really matter until tech level 2 to tech level 3 and tech level 4. So, when, you, when you're tech level 1, I wouldn't even worry about Nova or Ore. Worry about the carbon and worry about your food. So, whatever build you choose, just make sure you're getting the 500, 500 food 
that you need to tech for tech level two. In conclusion, tech level one is very, very difficult and very, very important because you're, it's all about worker production and getting to tech level two as fast as possible. Remember, tech level two requires 500 food and you need workers to do it. So optimizing worker production and food production in the early game is very important. Whatever which way you do it, which is animal nurseries, nurse, animals, uh, berries, farms, or even ships, whatever you do, make sure it's at the most production or more, most productive level you can get it at and get there as fast as possible. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. Peace out, players.